Chapter 10. The Emerald Tablets. Let's hold ourselves for a moment and look at the documenter of Egyptian documentation. Who is the documenter of ancient Egyptian information? His name was Tet and in Greek mythology he was known as Hermes. This is the guy who was in charge of all documentation in these times and was also a truth bringer among men. He was a documenter and worker for what we call evil or the darkness for a very long time and before his final descent, he left something behind for humanity. He is portrayed in Egyptian artwork as a human with an ibis for a head and is commonly depicted with a scroll and writing utensil in his end. He was also a high member of darkness and had been shown all aspects of life on this planet and what makes it up. He was humanity's inside connection if you will. Not only was he aware of how this whole system we call existence works from the inside out, but he spread his knowledge throughout the land we call Earth. He spread the knowledge far and wide, oftentimes having to portray himself as a Lemurian, because this is who he was affiliated with, but gave the secrets to clans and civilizations like the Native Americans and other Aboriginal tribes so that they would be the protectors of our Mother Earth and the true intent of our planet slash the universe. Before his descent into the underworld, Tech left behind tablets. Tablets that explain our entire existence and what we, as humans, are truly supposed to do. Because I feel that this document is one of the most important documents on this planet, coupled with all previous documentation slash information that I have given you, I will now give you the Emerald Tablets written by Tech in their entirety. The following documents have no metaphors. The following documents are not a religion. The following documents are the message from this great entity onto man, to preserve the ideals originally bestowed upon us as our true nature, documentation of a piece of Earth's past, and the life of Tet. From Chrysalinks.com. Translated by Doriel. Preface. The history of the tablets translated in the following pages is strange and beyond the belief of modern scientists. Their antiquity is stupendous, dating back some 36,000 years BC the writer is Teth, an Atlantean priest king, who founded a colony in ancient Egypt after the sinking of the mother country. He was the builder of the Great Pyramid of Giza, erroneously attributed to Cheops. In it he incorporated his knowledge of the ancient wisdom and also securely secreted records and instruments of ancient Atlantis. For some 16,000 years, he ruled the ancient race of Egypt, from approximately 52,000 BC to 36,000 BC at that time, the ancient barbarous race among which he and his followers had settled had been raised to a high degree of civilization. Teth was an immortal, that is, he had conquered death, passing only when he would and even then not through death. His vast wisdom made him ruler over the various Atlantean colonies, including the ones in South and Central America. When the time came for him to leave Egypt, he erected the Great Pyramid over the entrance to the Great Halls of Amenti, placed in it his records, and appointed guards for his secrets from among the highest of his people. In later times, the descendants of these guards became the Pyramid Priests, by which Teth was defied as the God of Wisdom, the Recorder, by those in the Age of Darkness which followed his passing. In legend, the Halls of Amenti became the Underworld. The halls of the gods, where the soul passed after death for judgment. During later ages, the ego of Teth passed into the bodies of men in the manner described in the tablets. As such, he incarnated three times, in his last being known as Hermes, the thrice born. In this incarnation, he left the writings known to modern occultists as the Emma Tablets, a later and far lesser exposition of the ancient mysteries. The tablets translated in this work are ten which were left in the Great Pyramid in the custody of the Pyramid Priests. The ten are divided into thirteen parts for the Saka of convenience. The last two are so great and far-reaching in their import that at present it is forbidden to release them to the world at large. However, in those contained here in her secrets which will prove of inestimable value to the serious student. They should be read, not once, but a hundred times for only thus can the true meaning be revealed. A casual writing will give glimpses of beauty, but more intensive study will open avenues of wisdom to the seeker. But now a word as to how these mighty secrets came to be revealed to modern man after being hidden so long. Some 1300 years BC, Egypt, the ancient Chem, was in turmoil and many delegations of priests were sent to other parts of the world. 
Among these were some of the pyramid priests who carried with them the Emma tablets as a talisman by which they could exercise authority over the less advanced priestcraft of races descended from other Atlantean colonies. The tablets were understood from legend to give the bearer authority from Teth. The particular group of priests bearing the tablets emigrated to South America where they found a flourishing race, the Medias who remembered much of the ancient wisdom. Among these, the priests settled and remained. In the 10th century, the Medias had thoroughly settled the Yucatan, and the tablets were placed beneath the altar of one of the great temples of the Sun God. After the conquest of the Medias by the Spaniards, the cities were abandoned and the treasures of the temples forgotten. It should be understood that the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been and still is a temple of initiation into the mysteries. Jesus, Solomon, Apollonius and others were initiated there. The writer was a connection with the Great White Lodge which also works through the Pyramid Priesthood, was instructed to recover and return to the Great Pyramid the ancient tablets. This, after adventures which need not be detailed here, was accomplished. Before returning them, he was given permission to translate and retain a copy of the wisdom engraved on the tablets. This was done in 1925 and only now has permission been given for part to be published. It is expected that many will scoff. Yet the true student will read between the lines and gain wisdom. If the light is in you, the light which is engraved in these tablets will respond. Now, a word as to the material aspect of the tablets. They consist of 12 tablets of emerald green, formed from a substance created through alchemical transmutation. They are imperishable, resistant to all elements and substances. In effect, the atomic and cellular structure is fixed, no change ever taking place. In this respect, they violate the material law of ionization. Upon them were engraved characters in the ancient Atlantean language. Characters which respond to attuned thought waves, releasing the associated mental vibration in the mind of the reader. The tablets are fastened together with hoops of gold and colored alloy suspended from a rod of the same material. So much for the material appearance. The wisdom contained therein is the foundation of the ancient mysteries. And for the one who reads with open eyes and mind, his wisdom shall be increased a hundredfold. Read. Believe or not, but read and the vibration found therein will awaken a response in your soul. In the following pages, I will reveal some of the mysteries which as yet have only been touched upon lightly either by myself or other teachers or students of truth. Man's search for understanding of the laws which regulate his life has been unending, yet always just beyond the veil which shields the higher planes from material man's vision the truth has existed, ready to be assimilated by those who enlarge their vision by turning inward, not outward, in their search. In the silence of material senses lies the key to the unveiling of wisdom. He who talks does not know, he who knows does not talk. The highest knowledge is not durable, for it exists as an entity in lanes which transcend all material words or symbols. All symbols are but keys to doors leading to truths, and many times the door is not opened because the key seems so great that the things which are beyond it are not visible. If we can understand that all keys, all material symbols are manifestations, are but extensions of a great law and truth, we will begin to develop the vision which will enable us to penetrate beyond the veil. All things in all universes move according to law, and the law which regulates the movement of the planets is no more immutable than the law which regulates the material expressions of man. One of the greatest of all cosmic laws is that which is responsible for the formation of man as a material being. The great aim of the mystery schools of all ages has been to reveal the workings of the law which connect man the material and man the spiritual. The connecting link between the material man and the spiritual man is the intellectual man, for the mind partakes of both the material and immaterial qualities. The aspirant for higher knowledge must develop the intellectual side of his nature and so strengthen his will that is able to concentrate all powers of his being on and in the plane it desires. The great search for light, life and love only begins on the material plane. Carried to its ultimate, its final goal is complete oneness with the universal consciousness. The foundation in the material is the first step, then comes the higher goal of spiritual attainment. In the following pages, I will give an interpretation of the Emma tablets and their secret, hidden and esoteric meanings. Concealed in the words of Teth are many meanings that do not appear on the surface. Light of knowledge brought to bear upon the tablets will open many new fields for thought.
Read and be wise but only if the light of your own consciousness awakens the deep-seated understanding which is an inherent quality of the soul. Tablet I. The History of Teth, the Atlantean. I, Teth, the Atlantean, Master of Mysteries, Keeper of Records, Mighty King, Magician, living from generation to generation. Being about to pass into the halls of an entity, set down for the guidance of those that are to come after, these records of the mighty wisdom of great Atlantis. In the great city of Kiran the island of Undal, in a time far past, I began this incarnation. Not as the little men of the present age did the mighty ones of Atlantis live and die, but rather from end to end did they renew their life in the halls of Amenti where the river of life flows eternally onward. A hundred times ten. Have I descended the dark way that led into light, and as many times have I ascended from the darkness into the light my strength and power renewed. Now for a time I descend, and the men of Chem, Chem is alchemy in ancient Egypt, shall know me no more. But in a time yet in bare new I arise again, mighty and potent, requiring an accounting of those left behind me. Then beware, O men of Chem, if ye have falsely betrayed my teaching, for I shall cast ye down from your high estate into the darkness of the caves from whence ye came. Betray not my secrets. To the men of the north or the men of the south lest my curse fall upon ye. Remember and heed my words, for surely will I return again and require thee that which ye guard. I, even from beyond time and from beyond death will I return, rewarding or punishing, as ye have requited your trust. Great were my people in the ancient days, great beyond the conception of the little people now around me, knowing the wisdom of old, seeking far within the heart of infinity knowledge that belonged to earth's youth. Wise were we with the wisdom of the children of light who dwelt among us. Strong will we with the power drawn from the eternal fire. And of all these, greatest among the children of men was my father, Tudm, keeper of the great temple. Link between the children of light who dwelt within the temple and the races of men who inhabited the ten islands. Mouthpiece, after the three, of the dweller of Unal, speaking to the kings, with a voice that must be obeyed. Grew I there from a child into manhood, being taught by my father the elder mysteries, until in time there grew within the fire of wisdom, until it burst into a consuming flame. Not desired I but the attainment of wisdom, until on a great day the command came from the dweller of the temple that I be brought before him. Few there were among the children of men who had looked upon that mighty face and lived, for not as the sons of men are the children of light when they are not incarnate in a physical body. Chosen was I from the sons of men, taught by the dweller so that his purposes might be fulfilled, purposes yet barren in the womb of time. Long ages I dwelt in the temple, learning ever and yet ever more wisdom, until I, too, approached the light emitted from the great fire, taught me he, the path to Amendi, the underworld where the great king sits upon his throne of might. Deep I bowed in homage before the lords of life and the lords of death, receiving as my gift the key of life. Free was I of the halls of Amenti, bound not by death to the circle of life. Far to the stars I journeyed until space and time became as naught. Then having drunk deep of the cup of wisdom, I looked into the hearts of men and there found out greater mysteries and was glad. For only in the search for truth could my soul be stilled and the flame within be quenched. Down through the ages I lived, seeing those around me taste of the cup of death and return again in the light of life. Gradually from the kingdoms of Atlantis passed waves of consciousness that had been one with me, only to be replaced by spawn of a lower star. In obedience to the law, the word of the master grew and a flower. Downward into the darkness turned the thoughts of the Atlanteans. Until at last in this wrath arose from Azaguanti, the dweller, this word has no English equivalent. It means a state of detachment, speaking the word, calling the power. Deep in earth's heart, the sons of Amendi heard, and hearing, directing the changing of the flower of fire that burns eternally, changing and shifting, using the logos, until the great fire changed its direction. Over the world then broke the great waters, drowning and sinking, changing earth's balance, until only the temple of light was left standing on the great mountain on Udal still rising out of the water. Some there were who were living, saved from the rush of the fountains, called to me then the master, saying, Gather ye together my people. Take them by the arts ye have learned it far across the waters, until ye reach the land of the hairy barbarians, dwelling in caves of the desert. Follow the, the plan that ye know of. Gathered I then my people and entered the great ship of the master. Upward we rose into the morning. Dark beneath us lay the temple. Suddenly over it rose the waters. Vanished from earth. Until the time appointed. Was the great temple. 
Fast we fled toward the sun of the morning, until beneath us lay the land of the children of Kim. Raging, they came with cudgels and spears, lifted in anger seeking to slay and utterly destroy the sons of Atlantis. Then raised I my staff and directed a red vibration, striking them still in their tracks as fragments of stone of the mountain. Then spoke I to them in words calm and peaceful, telling them of the might of Atlantis, saying we were children of the sun and its messengers. Cut I them by my display of magic science, until at my feet they graveled, when I released them. Long dwell we in the land of Kem, long and yet long again. Until obeying the commands of the master, who was sleeping yet is eternally, I sent from me the sons of Atlantis, sent them in many directions. That from the womb of time wisdom might rise again in her children. Long time dwelt I in the land of Kem, doing great works by the wisdom within me. Upward grew under the light of knowledge the children of Kem. Watered by the rains of my wisdom. Blasted I then a path to Amendi so that I might retain my powers, living from age to age a son of Atlantis, keeping the wisdom, preserving the records. Great grew the sons of Kem, conquering the people around them. Growing slowly upwards in soul force. Now for a time I go from among them into the dark halls of Amendi. Deep in the halls of the earth, before the lords of the powers, face to face once again with a dweller. Raised a high over the entrance, a doorway, a gateway leading down to a meadow. Few there would be with courage to dare it, few pass the portal to Dark Amendi. Raised over the passage, I, a mighty pyramid, using the power that overcomes earth force, gravity. Deep and yet deeper place I force house or chamber. From it carved I a circular passage reaching almost to the great summit. There in the apex, set I the crystal, setting the ray into the time-space, drawing the force from out of the ether, concentrating upon the gateway to Amedi. Other chambers I built and left vacant to all seeming, yet hidden within them are the keys to Amedi. He who in courage would dare the dark realms, let him be purified first by long fasting. Lie in the sarcophagus of stone in my chamber, then reveal I to him the great mysteries. Soon shall he follow to where I shall meet him, even in the darkness of earth shall I meet him, I, Teth, Lord of Wisdom, meet him and hold him and dwell with him always. Builded I the Great Pyramid, patterned after the pyramid of earth force, burning eternally so that it, too, might remain through the ages. In it, I builded my knowledge of magic science so that I might be here when again I return from an empty, I, while I sleep in the halls of an empty, my soul roaming free will incarnate, dwell among men in this form or another. Hermes, thrice born. Emissary on earth am I of the dweller, fulfilling his commands so many might be lifted. Now return I to the halls of an empty, leaving behind me some of my wisdom. Preserve ye and keep ye the command of the dweller. Lift ever upwards your eyes toward the light. Surely in time, ye are one with the Master. Surely by right ye are one with the Master. Surely by right ye are one with y'all. Now, I depart from ye. In my commandments, keep them and be them. And I will be with you, helping and guiding you into the light. Now before me opens the portal. Go I down in the darkness of night, 